of Davao City. Number one is safety. Davao is rated the safest city in the Philippines, and it's even rated one of the safest cities in the whole world. They also have 911 here with a fast response time just in case you get caught up in a sticky situation. Also, I noticed that out here in the city, you see a lot of police cars, so that's really good. Number two is cleanliness. Davao is also one of the cleanest cities in the Philippines. The local government implemented policies and programs to encourage citizens to maintain cleanliness, such as the no littering policy and the waste management program. It's very rare to see trash in the streets of Davao. Number three is geographically balanced. You can enjoy the conveniences of the city while also being close to the beaches as well as the mountains up north. Samuel Island and Talikid Island is just a short ferry ride right over the water and you can enjoy some really nice white sand beaches. Then north of the city you have places like Buda and Bukidnon which are located in the mountains of Mindanao. So beach days and mountain getaways are not a problem. Number four is cost of living. Davao City has a cheaper cost of living than other cities like Manila and Cebu, giving you the ability to have all the nice things that those cities have to offer at the fraction of the cost. Number five is that it's a developing city. In 2022, Davao's economy expanded by 8.1%, and it landed as the third fastest growing regional economy in the Philippines. And that number seems to be growing each year. In the city, you'll be seeing condominiums being built. You got Coastal Road, which is being expanded all the way down to Samal Island. They're also working on the construction of a bridge that will connect from the city all the way to Samuel Island, which should be expected to be done in 2027. I think Davao is an up and coming city and it has the potential to be the next Makati or BGC. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Kilala po sa mundo ang Davao City bilang isa sa pinakaligtas na lugar dahil daw ito sa mahigpit na pagpapatupad ng batas ni Mayor Rodrigo Duterte habang siya ang alkalde ng lungsod. Alamin po natin ang ipapang mga batas na ipinatupad ni Duterte na tumatak sa lipunan. Narito po ang report. Tatlong pong taon ang nanunungkulan sa Davao City si Mayor Rodrigo Duterte at sa tagal ng kanyang pamumuno, tumatak na sa lipunan ng ilan sa kanyang nagawa. Lalo na sa kanyang estriktong pagpapatupad ng mga batas at ordinansa. Nakilalan Davao City bilang isa sa pinakapayapa at ligtas na lungsod sa buong mundo. May pit na ipinagbabawal sa lungsod ang paninigarilyo sa mga pampublikong lugar. Bawal din ang pagbibenta ng alak o anumang inuming nakalalasing mula alauna hanggang alas otso ng umaga. Umiiral din sa Davao City ang ban sa firecrackers at pyrotechnics. Limitado rin ang paggamit ng video kaya hanggang alas 10 lang ng gabi para hindi makaistorbo sa mga kapitbahay. Hanggang 30 kph siyang maaaring speed ng mga driver kapag nagmamaneho sila sa downtown habang 40 to 60 kilometers per hour naman ang ibang highway. Ipinagmamalaki rin ng lungsod ang Davao Central 911. Ito ang dinadahil in case of emergency at agad na darating ang rescue operation team. Si Duterte rin ang nagpatupad ng Child Welfare Code of 1995 na naglalayang protektahan ng mga bata edad 1 to 17 years old sa anumang abuso. Ganun din ang Women's Development Code of 1996 para namang protektahan ng mga kababaihan. Marami ang humanga sa mahigpit na implementasyon ng mga batas at ordinansa sa Davao. At ito rin ang inaasahan ng mga Pilipino na gagawin ni Duterte sa anim na taon sakaling manungkulan siya bilang bagong presidente ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Mas lindot pa ang CDO kaysa Davao. Layo ra sa kagwapo sa lugar. Dili ko taga CDO. Mas lindot ang CDO. Pinoy tambayan, you know what? Chada imong giingon but I certainly hope it was 100% true. Asa kagayanon, ako taga CDO magiko. But still, salamat sa imong conference to say that. But I've, I'm I'm from Cagayan and nakaato na buko Davao. And I could say uh, medyo layo, layo pa ang agi on sa CDO gid sa tinuod lang. Ahead of its time gid ang Davao and benchmark gid siya sa Mindanao. O be, siguro half of the Philippines kay na, na develop na gid sa Davao through good governance and good management man good. Na develop gid kaya nila ang siyudad. Ano mas gusto mo Davao o Manila? <laughs> It depends eh. Ang safe, ang safe. Umaganda ako, hindi ako ready sa pangalawang round of life. <laughs> ang hinit ang buhay ko ngayon. Uh, sa Davao kasi medyo afford mo pa maging slow. Well, like when you tell people na I'll be there in 30 minutes, uh -huh. kaya. Uh, gets, gets, kasi uh, dito tuwa. Uh, Do you know that Davao City,
located in the southern part of the Philippines, is not only one of the largest cities in the country, but also boasts a wealth of fascinating facts. First and foremost, Davao City is known for its strict implementation of laws and ordinances, making it one of the safest and most disciplined cities in the Philippines. Davao City is also home to Mount Apo, the highest mountain in the Philippines, offering breathtaking views and challenging trekking opportunities for outdoor enthusiasts. Food lovers will rejoice in Davao City's culinary delights, including the famous durian fruit and delectable seafood fresh from the Davao Gulf. With its vibrant culture, stunning natural beauty, and warm hospitality, Davao City truly stands out as a must-visit destination in the Philippines. Part 3 and lastly, Davao City. Nyari kong Davao, January 1, New Year kaayo to no, tapos ang akong plane ticket ato for 5 days, tara unta, kayo mo bisay, tara lagi unta ko. Karun in town, buyag buyag 7 months, nako tira nagpuyo, dahil wala ko na ulis amo. Davao is the perfect balance of Cebu and Bohol. It is progressive, yet it's laid back. It is industrialized, yet provincial. Davao is the ko kaayo, morag imo agtang. Joke lang. <laughs> no, Davao is really big. Like, hoy, ginoo ko. Maglisod ka rin no? Maglisod ako to. May ngayon ng mga taga-dava. Ah, doon rin lagi na. Kaya pag-abot na ko, di rin ay nang-invite o gaalak. Huna-hunaan ako di rin sa may kuan, sa lanang nagpuyo. Tapos naabot in down ko mental. Kaya na ako nang alak na to. Ginoo ko. Kalayo. The one thing that you will notice about Davao in Igabudjud ni mo is really how clean the streets are, like limpyo kaayo. Ang ilang mga iskina-iskina. Oh, I'm sorry, we call it kanto here. Ang mga kanto, very clean. <laughs> Mas limpyo pa siya sa imong budhi, day. Inana. Also, you will feel very safe at night. Kinadyo kayo makita ng mga patrol cars. And 911 is very accessible. Kanang dili na ka mahadlok. Bisa pag magligid-ligid ka, dres kalsada pa doon kulik, hubog kay ka. Inana yung dating. If we talk about the people of Davao, mga Davaoenos, wala aragyud kay problema, day. Very friendly, very generous. Dili ka makafeel ng superiority complex when you go here. Medyo naglisod lang kung adjust pag ulan, okay? Kasayong pa rin yung dili magtagay. Like alas 5, alas 6 sa gabi, wala, hubog na. O niyang itaga, pikit kay tubig niya, water ang chaser. Tapos sa mga terminolohiya po, medyo naglibog ko pag una. One time ganin, nagkuha ko sa akong palondre. Tapos niya na ko, tiis, sago lang nina ko din ang karsunis. Tapos niya na yung taong tong nagbantay sa koan sa laundry shop. Ha? Unsa na, sir? Pantalon man din na. Ang ilang hilanat din, kalintura. Ang ilang sukli, kay kambyo. Tapos ako may kasulti ni mo, I love you. <laughs> Pero yung seryoso, wala lagi problema. Though at first, medyo... At first, to be honest, medyo na awkward ko. Especially kaya ako hilig ko coffee, so hilig ko magtambay og mga coffee shop like Starbucks or... Sa kung saan na dira, mga local coffee shops, hilig ko magtambay. Tapos sa pika stable ako madungga. Like, I don't know, pagkagabi kay ginakiss niya ang akong neck, tapos bakong kay siya og mouth. Pero karun gina-adapt na na ko siya, o sagay kay magtagalog na ko, sinulti ande. Bingo na ko, hay, nagkain na ka. <laughs> Hoy, painong good cold water. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm just complicit. <laughs> Pero Davao is not for everyone. Here kasi may pangil ang batas. Party ends at 1 a.m. Like sa mga bar 12:30 pa lang, gipaw na ang sounds day. Kanang lamig pa kayo unta iki ay lamig pa kayo unta iikit. Pero wa na manin taon dapat na tamole. At the same time, at 1 a.m. di na juga makapalit og alak kay liquor ba naman siya. Also na ay smoke ban to public places here. So, gamay ra ka ayog places kung pwede ka makasmoke. Overspeeding is such a huge violation here. I know. Kung gano ka layback ang lugar, ganun sila ka strict when it comes to law implementation. Calls, kapag smoker ka tapos pumunta ka dito sa Davao City, ito yung reminder ko sa inyo. Wag na wag kayong magyosi kung saan saan. Because uh, dito sa Davao, lahat ng uh, locations merong designated smoking area. So, say for example, Tinan mo tong mall, ang lawak nito kahit saan pwede kang magyose dyan, kahit sa labas ng sasakyan mo, di ba? Pero tingnan mo yung mga tao dyan, pumupunta talaga sila sa loob ng box na yan na designated area for smoking. Kapag may dumaan na mobile dyan, tapos nakita na nasa labas ka kahit andito lang, tapos wala ka dyan sa loob tapos nagyoyose ka, violation pa rin yan calls. <laughs> so ganun dito sa Davao, um, bawal talaga ang smoking in public, okay? Ako calls naniniwala talaga ako na dapat ang disiplina ay ginagawang kultura. Let's make discipline a culture. Kumbaga, kahit walang nakakakita sa iyo, walang nanonood sa iyo, ginagawa mo kung ano yung tama, kung ano yung naaayon sa batas. Kultura ang dahilan kung bakit minsan hindi tayo umuusad bilang isang bansa 
So kultura din ang magiging dahilan kung paano tayo uunlad. Davao is not a perfect city. We have our shortcomings. In fact, we have a lot of things to improve on. But I am telling you, compared to other places in the Philippines, Davao is peaceful and livable. The people here are disciplined. But in order for discipline to become a culture, especially in a government setup, it requires two things. Number one, obedient constituents, mga taong sumusunod sa batas, mga taong naniniwala. And number two, trustworthy government and law enforcers. Kapag wala yung dalawang yan, hindi mo masasabing yung disiplina ay nagiging kultura sa lugar nyo. That's why we say Davao life is here because in here, as long as you are obedient, as long as you do what is right, and as long as you don't harm other people, you are safe. Have a wonderful day called Stara Kape. And by the way, kapag nagkakape ka dito sa coffee shop, tulad ng mga Starbucks and other coffee shops, kapag gusto mong i-reserve yung upuan mo, pwede mong gamitin yung cellphone mo. Ilagay mo dun sa table. Pagbalik mo, andun pa rin. Walang magnanakaw. Eh! Nila tayo nakakakita ng mga moderno at makabagong lugar, mapa mall, tirahan, at iba pang mga pasyalan. Pero sa isang syudad sa Mindanao, ang nakikipagsabayan sa pag-level up ng pamumuhay. May mga sasakyan na dekuryente na halos lahat. Mayroon ding modernong mga poste na walang kable kang makikita hindi tulad dito sa Metro Manila. Pero may kuryente, nasa ng kable? Ang buhay ng mga Davawenyo, totoong guminhawa dahil iba ang Davao Power Up. Modernong buhay at pasilidad meron daw sa syudad ng Davao? Malinis at maayos na mga infrastruktura, mga sasakyang dekuryente, at mabilis na transaksyon gamit ang mobile application. Ang maunlad at high-tech na modern lifestyle na yan, sa Davao daw matatag... Yo, yo, what's up everybody? This is Taga Bukid at nandito ako ngayon sa Davao City. Alas dos na na madaling araw and I'm still walking on the streets. At eh, tingnan mo naman, maliwala at maraming tao pa. And Davao City is really safe guys. I promise you, I can guarantee that. Sa lahat nga pala na hindi pa nakakaalam, ang Davao City po ay isa sa pinaka-safe na city sa buong bansa at isa sa pinaka-safe na city sa buong Southeast Asia. Kaya ganito na lang kami ka-proud kay President Rodrigo Roa Duterte at sa lahat ng mga Duterte na namumuno na mamahala sa Davao City. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo because kung hindi dahil sa inyo, hindi din magiging safe ang lugar na to. Tingnan nyo naman! <laughs> So baka may napansin kayo guys bago matapos ang content na ito magpapasalamat nga pala ako kay Boss Safety Manager Boss maraming salamat sa pagbigay mo ng hoodie sa akin as your support as our support kay VP Sara guys sa lahat ng mga DDS natin kasama dyan na hindi pa nakapag order ng hoodie na ito just PM me kasi gusto ko kung meron ako nito, dapat meron din kayo para magkaisa tayo at isang team tayo lalaban tayo hanggang 2028 Go VP Sara for President! Si Bongbong Marcos bangag noon, ngayong presidente na bangag naktin ang presidente. Kayong mga military, alam ninyo yan? Lalo na yung nasa Malacanian, alam ninyo. The armed forces of the Philippines, alam ninyo. May drug addict tayo na presidente, putang inang yan. Nung ako'y mayor, pinakitaan ako ng evidence ng pedeya. Doon sa listahan, nandoon yung pangalan mo. Ayaw kong sabihin yan kasi magkaibigan tayo. Kung hindi magkaibigan, magkakilala. Eh, ikaw eh. Pumapasok kayo ng alanganin. Mr. President, baka susunod ka sa dinaanan ng tatay mo.
Diyan ako takot, ayaw ko mangyari sa iyo yan. You are testing the waters, not even. You are, you know, pushing to the limits ang pasensya ng Pilipino. Huwag na huwag mong gawin yan. You want to perpetuate yourself in power at the expense ng buhay ng bayan. Huwag ninyong kalimutan, Mr. President, ang delikadesa. Mr. President, huwag mong kalimutan na isang term ka lang pagkatapos bababa ka na. Sa mga mahal kong maisog na kababayan na nagrali sa Angeles, pasensya na po, uh, inabot ako ng ayoko na lang sabihin kasi napakakorne. Pero eh, retired na kasi ako at uh, yung pera ko, may meron ako, may, may retirement ako pero eh, pinuposto ko lang. At uh, yun na kasi ang source of uh, uh, existence ko. Uh, sorry, hindi ako nakapunta. Pero I would like to congratulate you for your gesture uh, to show to the country and to the world that... Uh, may, may damdam tayo. Hindi tayo galit kay Marcos o hindi tayo galit sa gobyerno. May damdam na mga pinapalabas natin. But this would be as good as any other time to tell the president, the military, the police, and all na hindi kami yung subversive na gusto namin tumbahin ang gobyerno, paalisin si Marcos. So, we just want uh, reforms that uh, yung naniririnigin nyo sa grupo ng mga maisog at yung mga Pilipino na ayaw ng gulo pero gustong may pagbabago. Yan lang naman po. At congratulations sa inyo. Yan lang ang habol natin. At yan na ang hamon ko sa gobyerno. Wala ng iba. Walang interesado patalsikin si Marcos. Walang interesado sa gobyerno na patumbahin mo. Huwag ko iyan kay dumaan ako ng presidente pati gobyerno ko ito. So, para just to raise notes. But, we will ask that we will be heard from time to time so that government would know what the sentiments of the people are and whether the sentiments or not uh, totoo man o hindi makinig lang kayo total kung mali hindi sabihin ninyo pag mali wala naman kami magawa sabihin niyo tama wala rin kami magawa just the right to be heard yan ang importante sa constitution the right to be heard. Period. Maraming salamat. As a pros. So the Philippine president has been waging a war on drugs in his own country. Since he came to power, a lot of people have been killed in this war on drugs. So the UN and people in the US want to start saying something to the president of the Philippines. Well, you will see a journalist tried to come in on his moral high horse from America to tell this president about what he's doing in his own country. And I want you to hear exactly what this man says to this reporter. Let's go ahead and roll the clip. Gun law, sir. It can happen. It, it, it happens in America. They're shooting the blacks there. It shows on TV. It shows on TV. What's the difference between America and the Philippines? Nothing. So what is surprising here is surprising to us. We see policemen there shooting a black guy there. How many times had it happened in the past? That's why you have the, demos the violent demonstration. So, would it surprise you and me? 
Almost the same. One case only, three cases. So what? It involves the same principle. Say for every one block they're dead, you have about five here. And so, does it make uh, this world more livable because there is less killing? The, when you shoot <laughs> a block there, dead, what is that? Is that not appalling? When you bomb Syria and Iraq and you kill communities and you kill children and old people and hospital, what is it? And why is it that United States is not doing anything? I do not read anybody in that stupid body complaining about the stench there of that. Look at the iconic boy uh, that was uh, taken out from the rubble. And he was made to sit in the ambulance. And we saw it. So what's the difference? Life of a criminal or maybe he was really rubbed out. We cannot discount it. But what do you think what the Americans did to the black people there? Is that not rubbing out also? I say, well, it was just uh, one community there, one state of America. <laughs> well, but you have there about 10. So what's the difference? Are we here for the counting or the basic principles of human rights? Almost the same. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, when I heard the video, I watched it. I watched it with a big smile on my face. I was like, yes, put him in his place. Tell him exactly what they do to us in this country. You think the whole world don't see when black people are shot and killed? You think the whole world didn't see the Eric Garner video? The whole world didn't see the Charles Kinsey video? The man had his hands up on the ground. And then you try to go and to other countries like you some sort of moral authority you have lost your position as a moral authority in america because all the killing you doing to the black man and black woman they watching all these videos they watching your reaction they watching your media's reaction how you try to side with those who do the killing and try to demonize the victim so you can't go to nobody else's country and tell them what they should and should not be doing who they should kill and who they should not kill you did that mess to yourself. You heard the man talk about Syria with the little boy. You can't talk no more. You see, one thing about the Internet, it connects us all. We can see everything in real time. There's no way now you can hide when these things are happening to the black man and black woman. The world see it. So when you go wagging your finger at other countries, they can say, oh, no, 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 no. I seen these videos. I seen what you do. Why is your citizens in the street uh, protesting all the time? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? So you got to give an account for that. So before you go and tell somebody else in another part of the world, just remember, they got every right to tell you about yourself and what's going on with the black citizens in your country. We've always been told if we work hard, we'll be successful. What, what, what the uh, uh, racist is going to say about this one, the black phobics? What you going to say about this one? You going to complain? What you going to say? Oh, his country's a hell hole. His country is this. You, oh, you, it's always an excuse. But you ain't got an excuse about it because you should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed because this man is sitting up here and calling you out on your stuff. But it is what it is. Stop killing people. Stop taking pleasure in it. Stop justifying it. Let's get along in peace. Let's try to fix our problems and our issues in this country. That's it. No more, no less. But as you say, we still going to have this problem because this hate is taught in their households. And then in their household, they are teach that they're superior. They're better than people and all this other stuff. So that's why this stuff continues, unfortunately. Hit me up in the comments. So apparently... Pakiramdam ko at sa tingin ko sa mga nangyayari, wala silang kaso for impeachment. Kaya sila nandyan. Kaya sila sige hanap ng hanap ng kung ano ang gagamitin nila. Ngayon, uh, ang track ni Franz Castro ni Trillanes is impeachment. Gumawa sila ng isa pang track uh, na resignation. Parang papalabas nila, impeach ka namin for wrongdoing, whatever. And then, itong isang grupo na ito, uh, umalis ka dyan. Kasi kapag hindi ka umalis, kapit tuko ka. Pero, 
hindi naman kasi ako sasagot sa young guns. Dahil, kailangan ko sumagot sa 32 million na bumoto sa akin. Hindi sa isa or dalawa uh, na tao. Kaya hindi ako aalis dito. Dahil nilagay ako ng mga tao dito believing that I will work for the country. And that is what we did.